Hello, my name is Ravel Gaither and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So my name is Ravel Gaither and I am the owner and designer of my brand Ravel Gico. And today on my YouTube channel, I'm not gonna be making one, not two, but three dope, amazing mini backpacks and they look freaking awesome, okay? Like, they're amazing. So. I was not planning on making these bags, but a lot of people request mini backpacks and they really do like mini backpacks. So I was on live, what about two weeks ago? And someone kept, people kept requesting mini backpacks, mini backpacks, and I get a lot of comments on my TikTok videos or just comments in general just saying um, mini backpacks. So I was like, you know what? I guess I'll drop some. And originally I was only gonna do these two and in this video, I do only show me making these two. But yesterday, last minute, um, well, it was really a total of two days, but I just finished it yesterday. This one, I decided to add this one in. Um, and I really did it because I thought these two would just, it was just awkward. Cause I like to design things by three. Sometimes I'll do less than three and do like two or something or just a one-time piece. But I really like to stick with three and I just thought it was awkward. So I'm not gonna show the bags too much cause y'all could watch that in the outro or just in the whole overall view of the video. But this is the one um, that is freaking dope. So it's quilted on the front and the back, back panel quilted. And I used a pink selvage denim on this one. And it really is a really, really reason why, can I talk? The reason why I made this one is because I got the pink denim and I wanted to try it out. So did that one. This was the last minute one, it's a dark blue. And this is the one that's like my brand signature color, simple. I'm not gonna explain too much cause you can watch in the outro or just in the video. So yeah, I did a sketch uh, for the pink one and for the two-tone blue one. It's the only sketch, I'll throw that up on the screen somewhere. But I don't have a sketch for this one cause like I said, I threw this one in last minute. But I'm excited, they look amazing. So um, if you do wanna stick around and watch me make these bags, you can watch the whole video. I don't know how long it's gonna be. Like I said, I only filmed me making the two-tone denim blue and then the pink, the pink and black one. And the only reason why I didn't film this one was because I was like, I don't feel like filming anymore. It was last minute, I was like, you know what? I'll just make it. But if you wanna watch me make these videos, long story short, Keep on watching and let's get into it. So I have all the pieces cut out for the blue bag that I'm gonna be starting on first. And I have both of the bags cut out, but I'm just showing this one first because having all the pieces on my table is too much. So I'm starting with the blue bag first and I already have my little quilt design kind of drafted out on here where I'm gonna be quilting it. It's like that for the front and the back piece. And this is the color combos for everything. It's gonna be a yellow inside. You know, I like to do the yellow with this because it's yellow stitching. This is my brand signature colors I use it all the time and you know I have the straps pretty much already ready I just have to sew so everything is pretty much prepped I just have to sew everything together and I'm using this foam this is actually um upholstery foam and the reason why I'm using this is because the other foam that I have it's too thin so as you can see this is like this foam right here is pretty much two layers in one of the other one and I tested it out to see how it would look quilted and it didn't give that look that I was looking for. And I tested it out on this one and it did, even though this one is a lot, uh, it's more thicker. Um, once I sew it down, it's gonna compress it so it won't be so stiff, but I am kind of nervous on how this is gonna actually work out because it's my first time really using foam in a design. And I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but I'm going to, First, do the quilting on the front and the back pieces because I really have to do that first. And then I'm gonna just sew as I go. So I'm gonna start on quilting and that's what you guys are gonna see. All right, so I have both the front and the back pieces quilted and I have my name tag on here with the rivets. And I think the rivets add a nice little look and both of them are nice and done. And I'm actually, the foam, 
it was really thick but it did condense it down once i started sewing on it so it is it's not as um thick and stiff as it was before but it is still kind of it's still gonna be a task to sew especially because i'm not used to it i've never really sewed with foam before but it's the first time for everything so now that i have the front and the back both done i'm gonna start on the handle because i'm gonna do a top handle on both of the bags so I'm gonna start on the top handles and getting that attached to the top zipper piece. And I broke the zipper panel up in different pieces. So the front part of the zipper panel is shorter than the back because I did a handle in, I'll explain a little later why, you'll see why I did it. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the top handle. So let's start doing that. So I have the top handle portion of the bag done. And this part, putting the rivets on this part was actually really difficult because the denim was super thick in this area. And normally when I do my handles, I'll add like a little stitch line right here, but it was too thick. I was like, I'm not even gonna do that. So I just added a rivet there and it was hard to punch a hole and get it there, but it worked and it's super nice. I like how stiff the handle is so it holds up. It doesn't flop or anything. So like that so i have this done so now i'm gonna go ahead and start on the back of the backpack because i'm doing um the little strap um cover that's gonna cover up the backpack strap sewn onto the actual bag and i also have to assemble the straps so that's the next part i'm gonna do because i want to get the front and the back done before i even start sewing the other stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and sew that up and that's what you're gonna see next so let's get into that All right, so I have both the front and the back pieces done. They look really nice. Um, I am kind of worried about this, that these rivets might be too close, but I don't think they'll be close enough to where I'll run into an issue of sewing or my needle hitting it when I go to sew it together. But I went ahead and added both the straps and the little strap connector. I added rivets there just to reinforce that. I added the little things right here. This is what the little um, adjustable strap piece is gonna be at to adjust the strap and make it longer or shorter, however you wanna wear it. And this is the front piece, all nice. And then this is the um, back zipper panel piece with the top handle. And what I'm gonna go ahead and start now is I'm actually going to do the zipper and attach the zipper on. So this is the back zipper piece and then this would be the front because remember I said I broke the zipper panel up in pieces because the back needs to be a little longer to fit this handle on here. So, and I want the full width of the bag to be five inches. So 
Once I sew everything together and add all the seam allowances in, this will equal out to be five inches total in width for the zipper panel. So what I'm gonna go ahead and start now is attaching this and the lining together. I'm gonna assemble the lining, cause like I, um, I don't think I said this yet, but I'm trying a different way for the lining. I'm doing a bias binding to finish off the raw edges. I've never done one of these before. Uh, kind of nervous about that, but uh, I'm gonna try it. So with that, that means I'm gonna have to actually assemble the lining and sew the lining piece to the actual panel instead of doing the outside and the ex interior separate, if that makes sense. So I will be pretty much sewing it at the same time. I don't know if that makes sense, but you'll see what I'm doing when I do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the zipper panel and attaching, um, putting the lining together as well so I can sew that on. And I don't think I said this, but this is the second day of working on this. So day two of the first bag. So let's start sewing the zipper panel. All right, so I have all of my pieces assembled and I'm actually now ready to put the bag together. So like I said, I'm doing a bias finishing for the lining. So I basted my lining pieces to the actual exterior. So this is the back piece. You know, this is where the back is gonna be. I like the zipper pocket, all nice. And then this is the front piece. It's gonna have this little big slip pocket right here. Bam, like that. And then this is the zipper panel. Like I said, the front, no, the back part is bigger because it has to have that top handle and it has a double zip and then the lining is based on here as well. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is like I said, attach the zipper panel to the front and the back piece. So essentially I'm gonna base, well not base it, but sew it on like this. And then the raw edges um, are gonna get lined with the bias binding. So it's my first time doing it. Like I said, I don't know what I'm doing, but that's what I'm gonna start doing. Um, I'm kind of nervous for putting the panel on because I'm using foam and I've never used foam before. So I really don't know how sewing this is gonna be. Hopefully it goes smoothly and I don't run into any issues. Um, when pattern making it, I was, or designing wise, I decided not to put foam in the top zipper or bottom panel because I was like I don't want it to be too thick while sewing it so this is um it's not it doesn't have foam in any of this part it's just foam on the front and the back and then I really added the foam because I wanted that quilted look that's the design I was going for so we're gonna I, I'm going to sew this together and we're gonna see if this works so let's get into it All right, so I finally have the front and the back attached to the gusset and it's coming together. It looks really nice. So I, I didn't record um, me sewing on this back piece because it was just too difficult and you couldn't see anything anyway because it was so stiff and just, you couldn't see me sewing anyway. So I just stopped recording. But now I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the raw edges 
with this binding and this is waterproof canvas and it doesn't fray so that's the, re the reason why i'm using it so i don't have to worry about it fraying over time um and i'm kind of nervous because with bias binding it's kind of difficult because it's hard to catch the back like the you'll catch the front and you'll be thinking that you're catching the back and when you're done and you pull it out you realize the whole time you weren't even sewing the back of the bias so that's my only worry about doing this but um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try it. So let's try this. All right, so I have the bias all around the edges and it was difficult to attach, I'm not gonna lie, and I probably could have done a better job, but this was my first time, I didn't really know, I didn't really know what to expect, but overall it worked. So now I'm gonna have to flip this right side out and it's gonna be kind of hard because it is very stiff and firm. And now that I added this canvas on this bias, it, these, I don't know, this is really firm, the seams which will be nice once it's turned out because it'll make the things be all nice and firm, but when you're trying to turn it out, it's not. So I'm gonna go ahead, oh, it looks so nice. Okay, so I'm gonna try. This is always the hardest part too. Good thing it's a big, not a big opening, but the opening is not too small. Yeah, this is gonna be difficult. Yeah, okay, let's try to just flip from the top. Kind of like this first, and then I can worry about all the other areas. Okay. Ooh. Yo, I'll, every time I do this, I feel like I'm gonna rip the bag or something. All right, so after struggling for a good few minutes to get it turned out, it's finally turned out. I gave it a little press too in the corner. I didn't fully press it, but I just gave it a minor press just to kind of get a general idea of the shape. And I love it. It almost reminds me of a giant egg. Like the shape of it reminds me of an egg. So when I named the bag, I might do something um, resembling that. But the bag looks really nice. I love it so much. I love the quilted look and it, it's a nice firm. I love it so much. So now what I have to do is the last thing actually, which is attach the little adjustable strap piece for the shoulder straps. So I already have all the pieces cut out for that. So let's go ahead and start on that. All right, so it is now day three of working on both of these mini backpacks and I finished the other one last night and it looks really nice. I'm not showing the finished product because you'll either see that in the intro or the outro. 
um, but it came out really nice there are a few minor things that i would like to make a little bit better on this one or just pay a little bit more attention to one being my nameplate and making sure that it's 100 percent nice and straight on there and just other little things um that i'll just work on as i do this one but this is pretty much the color combo for this one so this is a pink zipper tape with a black gunmetal finish i love it i went with this one because i think it would look nice with the black and the pink and then um the inside is not going to be the same pink it's going to be actually a hot pink it kind of matches no not really i was going to say it kind of matches the zipper but it's going to be a hot pink and because the other pink that i have is a really light pink and i don't think that would look nice on the inside of this one um but this hot pink i think would be a nice little color combo just to change up for it so i'm gonna do this one on the inside and then the black denim is what we're using this is actually part of the strap i haven't did this yet but the first thing i'm gonna do like i did on the other one is i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna quilt the front and the back pieces of the bag because that has to really be done first before i can really move on to anything else so i'm gonna start on quilting that i already cut the foam out and everything so i'm just gonna start sewing that and I'm actually really excited for this one. I think the color combo is going to be so dope. And I would have started on this one yesterday, but my wrist started hurting really bad. Um, my wrist has been starting to kind of get a little sore, all these bags that I'm making, because, you know, it's stiff. You're pushing, you're pulling, you're flipping the bags. It's a lot of wrist action. So they were hurting. So I took a break, um, did some wrist exercises this morning, and I bought a wrist brace um, for when I sew so that I don't run into any problems like carpal tunnel or anything like that. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the front and back of this, so let's get into that. Alright, so I have both the front and the back pieces quilted and all that. I have my name um, plate on here. I have the rivet set. And I ran into a small issue when it came from time for me to sew this on. So I wanted originally to use this pink thread on all the black areas of the bag because I thought it would be a nice pop of color. But this is not the right thread. Um, I thought it was bonded nylon. This is bonded polyester. And I could use it, but um, my machine, I need a thicker needle to work with this thread because it is a thicker bonded polyester. And the biggest needle that I have is the biggest needle that I have in my machine. And that's the only needle size that I can have that big in here. So, so I had to use a lighter pink thread, which I'm not, I mean, I was a little skeptical about, but it actually doesn't look too bad. So it's just a nice little pop of color, not pop of color, but it's a nice little color. So now that I have the front and the back done, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the back piece and assembling the back straps, um, the shoulder straps, and the little back panel that's gonna cover that. And um, I'm gonna start on sewing the straps together actually, because I have to sew that first before I can even sew them to the bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the straps and let's start doing that.
All right, so now I have both of the front and the back pieces completed. Um, I'm not gonna add the little adjustable strap part until I'm done. I said, I like to do that the last part. Like when I do little bags, too, I like to just do the strap last. I don't know, it's just, I always do the strap last. So I'm gonna do that uh, once everything's put together. So now, since I have the front and the back together, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the top handle piece, which is the, I don't have any of the pieces over here right now, but it's gonna be the little top handle part like I did on the other bag. So I'm gonna start on that, attach that to the top back zipper panel and then rivet that, which I'm really dreading doing the rivets because I think that's what hurt my wrist last time because that was such a thick area trying to punch through. Um, and I think punching through that was really putting stress on my hands. So I think that's the part that put my wrist under some pain, but I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that because I gotta get done. So let's start doing that. All right, so I have the top handle done. It looks super nice. It actually wasn't hard to put the rivet in either to press it and rivet it. It actually wasn't that hard with this denim. I don't know, maybe the other denim was a little bit thicker in some areas, but this one was actually easy to do. So now that I have this top handle done, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to actually attach the zipper and get that all situated and then attach the bottom panel and then start doing the lining so that I can sew that onto the actual exterior pieces. Cause like I said, I'm doing the bias binding for the lining. Kind of nervous because I didn't do the 100% the best on the other one. It's my first time doing it. So hopefully on this time, hopefully on this one, I can do a little better. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and start on the zipper. So let's get into that. All right, so I have all of the pieces finished up and lined and they're all prepped. So this is the outer gusset. It's all lined with the pink and all nice, has a handle. This is the front piece lined with a little slip pocket. And then this is the back piece lined with the zipper pocket. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna actually attach the outer gusset to the front and the back exterior. And uh, I'm using, this whole bag is made out of a out of selvage denim the other bag was not made out of selvage denim so this denim at least the black one is going to be a little bit stiffer so hopefully it goes nicely there's no i don't run into any issues the only thing i really am kind of worried about once again is that's bias binding because i just don't really like doing bias it's not something that i'm really fond of but it worked so i'm gonna go ahead and start on the gusset so let's do that
All right, so all of the bags are done. And like I said, I'm filming my intro. Well, I didn't say this, but I'm filming my intro and outro on the same day. So if you see me wearing the same thing, like I always say, mind your business. I have all of the bags done. And like I said in the intro, I added this one in. So I'm gonna go and give a full rundown in detail of the finished product of the bag. I'm gonna go in the order that I started or that order that I made them. So this is the two-toned blue one. And I love it. So. It is quilted on the front and on the back. It's yellow stitching and my name, um, with this bag, my name is kind of a little, it's not slanted, it's just um, the nameplate. I didn't have a pattern piece, I kind of just, normally with my nameplates, I don't have a pattern piece for them. I kind of just cut them out and just kind of uh, eyeball it. But once I got to this bag, I was like, you know what, I'm tired of my nameplate looking slanted, so I made a pattern. So for the pink and this one, um, it's not perfect, perfect, but it's really not that big of a deal. It still looks really nice. So my name is attached as by stitching and then I used rivets in every four corner because I just thought that would be a nice little touch. And it's a yellow zipper with a gold coil and it is a double zip so, you know, you can open it up. I have a stuff right now. And then the thing that I like about using foam too is that it really gives the bag a nice, like it helps it hold the shape. Like this bag does not have any foam in it, right? It doesn't have anything in it, foam. It doesn't have anything in it right now and it the shape is amazing and it's gonna be keeping its shape so that's one thing i will say about the foam and then this is the inside it's a nice yellow it matches the stitching on the outside it has my name tag a little zipper pocket in the back and then it has this slip pocket which you can't really see but it has a slip pocket right there and it's just really nice the straps um on this are adjustable so you can adjust them to whatever the straps are also padded you saw all of this in the video so i really don't have to give too much of a detailed explanation but now this one which i just know this one's gonna go so fast this one is freaking dope like I love this one. So like I said in the video, I did run into the issue of the pink thread that I wanted to use. So originally I wanted to use a thread of pink. Where is it at? So I wanted to use this color pink thread because I thought it would be nice. It doesn't match the front. It kind of matches the zipper though because the zipper is like a hot pinkish. So I thought it would be a nice pop of color on all the black areas, but this is the wrong thread and it's too thick for the needle that I have for that I use on my machine. So the, it, with the threading, it just didn't look right. So I had to end up using a lighter pink thread, which it's fine. Um, on the bag, you can't really tell that it is pink. It looks almost like an off whitish color. Um, it really doesn't look pink at all, to be honest, but it didn't come out bad. So, but the back is nice and quilted. Everything, this one has silver hardware. The first one that I showed has all gold hardware or brass hardware, I should say. This one has a pink zipper tape with a black gunmetal finish and the black um, zipper pulls. Well, it's not black, they're gunmetal. It has a double zip. This one is not stuffed, so I don't have to worry about that. And the inside is a hot pink, so. It's hard to show the inside. So the inside is a hot pink. It doesn't match the pink on the outside. Um, but honestly, all the sh different shades of pink look really good together. And the one thing I will say is that my I don't really care to match colors too much as long as it's kind of in the same range or in the same, I don't know how to explain it, but if it's like similar, it doesn't have to be exact, but if it's similar, it will look good. And this bag looks amazing. So this is this one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show the last one, which I like all of these bags so much. So this is the last bag. Oh wait, hold up. Let me talk about the denim on the pink one first though. So this bag is made out of all selvage denim. So it's the black and the pink. And I want, I want when I made this bag, I really made it because I bought the pink denim and I wanted to try it out. So I bought it from this brand called KS Denim. There is, they have a website, but I bought, the, I bought the fabric through Etsy. And they're in Hong Kong and they make the fabric on old weaving shuttle looms. And I thought it was such a nice color. And it's like, in person, you can like see the white thread that they use mixed in. It looks really nice in person. Like, I don't even, 
it's not gonna focus, but you can't see it on camera, but it just looks so nice and it feels so good. Like really amazing bag. And I know that this is gonna go really fast. Now back to this one. This one is also a selfish denim. It's from the same brand that I used, that I bought the pink denim from. And this one is a dark jean blue. I love it. I use white stitching on this one because I thought the white would look really good against the dark blue and that it does. And I use silver hardware as well because this really, silver with this is just amazing all the way around. And then I used a blue zipper tape with a silver finish. It has a double zip as well. And the inside of this one is actually silver. So it matches the silver on the outside. I really can't show the linings too much too well, but it has the zipper pocket on the inside and the slip pocket as well, like all the other ones. It has the adjustable strap, the padded um, shoulder um, strap area, and it's just really nice. I love each and every one of these bags, and there are, um, depending on when you're watching this video, these bags are up and available on my website. There's only one of each one. I may make more depending on how the sales go, because when I make stuff, I really don't know if it sells. I really just trust God that it will sell. And sometimes it does, sometimes it takes me a little bit longer, but we'll see. So depending on when you're watching this, these bags are up and available on my website. I wrote bellsgco.com. It should be somewhere on the screen or when I talk in my outro, I'll explain. But yeah, these are really nice. I was thinking about making me one, but I was like, I really probably wouldn't wear it because I, don't, I like mini backpacks, but I don't know. They're not really my preference. Like if I were to be going out, I wouldn't say, oh, let me put a mini backpack. I don't know, mini backpacks just aren't really my preference go-to bag. I would say more of like a sling or a fanny pack or something like that, that's more my go-to. But these bags are awesome because there are mini backpack lovers out there. And I know because I see all of the comments for them to be requested, so. But I thank all of you guys for watching this video. And if you do wanna keep up with my business and follow me, you can follow my Instagram at rovelsgco. That'll be somewhere on the screen. Or you can follow my TikTok, which is rovels. You know, all my social medias will be on the screen. What is it? Instagram, TikTok, and that's really it. Uh, but if you do want to give this video a big thumbs up, I would really appreciate that. And subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you can be uploaded when I upload it. My words really do get so that you can be notified when I upload. And like I said, I've been saying this in all my videos, I'm using YouTube more pretty much every time I make something I'm gonna be using or filming it just to have content to continuously keep putting on my YouTube because I have a problem where I will be on a good streak and then bam, fall flat on it and then not make a video for years. And it's like, no, I gotta keep forcing myself to make videos. So if you do wanna stick around and watch the process of everything I do, you can subscribe. And what can I say? If you do want to buy the bags, they're on my website at rovelsgco.com. Bro, this pink. I don't know what to say. Like, and it's fully. Stop. 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 Anyways, I'm gonna go, but I thank all you guys for watching this video and sticking around to the end, and I'll see you in my next one. And saying bye is always awkward, so I'm just gonna say a flat out bye. Bye.